Hello, friends, and welcome to the front. Hey, everybody. We are the Pillars of Liberty, and this is the Polkast. We want to thank you for joining us this evening for our, our broadcast, and it is the weekend, so yep. like we do always here in the Pillars on the weekend, we raise our cups of American Mule. Cheers, Cheers love. love. To the Pillars. To the Pillars. Mm. Oh, that's good. That is refreshing. What a difference a week makes. We got jackets on. We've gotten, uh, it was it was nice today, but it was. It was, it got up to the 90s and then yeah. it just dropped. Yeah, it, it just got cold outside. It sure did. But it is good sleeping weather and we're, we're not complaining about that. And hey, but we were kind of, you know, warned ahead of time by old Joe. Yeah, we were. That there was a dark, dark winter coming. I remember him saying but our that. Our well. patience is wearing thin. Oh, but his patience are wearing thin. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I could see why that could happen. There was a lot of things that happened this week. <clears throat> kind of what we'd like to. Well, I think things that transpired the week before are starting to like a flower open up even more, and people are starting to be like, "Wow." Um, especially in the case with Loudoun County. Yes, there's a lot um, of exposure there. Right yeah, because that is where we said, like last week, we said that place seems ripe for like uh, an experiment of sorts. Right. And it definitely seems like they are full steam ahead with this progressive uh, agenda. But the thing about that is, is that it's good and bad. A, lo- a lot of things are moving very fast. But because of that, it seems so unnatural. It does. And I think it allows for people to actually stop and say, wait a second, this this does not seem... Normal. Yeah, like it just seems like it's forced at this point. Mm -hmm. And especially when people say things like, you know, follow the science and we believe in the science. Well, we we, we do too. And, you know, there's science is something where you, you should always look for the answers and right. a lot of science is based in theory well I'll, and i have to disagree here for a second go ahead i do not really believe i don't put my faith in science nor do i believe i follow science i, I put my faith in god and amen I, can i get a hallelujah can i get a hallelujah from uh, the children <laughs> absolutely but I, I i i i follow god always and first but the science supports God in a lot of ways. And because of old ways of thinking and ideas that were, you know, etched into stone 100, 150 years ago, or the enlightenment happened with a lot of the academia. But it was only enlightenment because I think they felt so proud about themselves. Like, well, we did this, we figured this out. Yeah. And then they start to find out later on, well, that, that's not quite true. When the science develops, technology develops. Right. And it's not quite what they think. But yet they hold true to these dogmas and they, they call out religious people for doing the same. Religion at this point, in my opinion, in the United States is nothing more than another... I'm sorry, science, science. in my opinion, in the United States at this point, is essentially another religion. Except for it's funded by, by taxpayers. Hmm. But that's uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That's another topic for another story. Some of the things that we want we did want to touch on, and that'll be towards the end of the show, is what we mentioned last week in the developments with um, you know congressional hearings uh, with Merrick Garland and his knowledge on the things that developed with yep. um, this school board. And some people are going, "Well, why is this okay?" It was like even Merrick Garland said, well, "This seems like a local matter." Well, if it was a local matter, why'd you get the feds involved? So we'll touch that on that at the end. But the first thing we want to talk about, and we'll bring up the first slide here in a second, is the upcoming cutoff dates essentially for military personnel that need to get vaccinated. vaccinated. And there are quite a few soldiers, sailors, devil dogs, Tufel Hundens, uh, airmen, that are still hesitant to get, get the poke. Right. So to speak. I don't and, blame them. And I don't blame them either. And we don't want to get uh, shut down by our overlords. So we won't say too much, hey. you know, about um, COVID. But we will say 
what we found in the news regarding uh, overall military numbers and right. you know just what's going on with military readiness. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring up this first slide. And there we go. So story from Stars and Stripes came out a, uh, a couple a couple weeks ago on the 10th of October. Okay. And, you know, it, it stated that, you know, hundreds of thousands of troops, and we kind of touched on this a little bit. Yeah. Excuse me, last week. And when you look at the, in the article, you look at some of the numbers, you have essentially like the Navy is very heavily vaccinated already. They're at 90% for, for the force. Uh, the Marine Corps is about 72%. And both services uh, share a deadline of November 28th as far as the final cutoff for, for the force to be completely vaccinated. In the Air Force, uh, they have a little bit different situation. They still have about 60,000 personnel, this was a couple weeks ago, that have one week left, a little over a week, to be compliant with the Department of Defense's uh, goal of having, having the entire force, at least for the Air Force, vaccinated. Each branch, um, has a little bit different timeline. Right. Obviously, I mentioned uh, Marine Corps and Navy. They're kind of brother and sister as far as the forces are concerned. I, being a Marine, I, you know, we've been on ship and stuff. And so kind of as the Navy goes, the Marine Corps goes because they work together so closely. So the, the other issue that comes up is the Army Guard and Reserve, and that makes up about 520,000 um service members of the military overall i forgot the number of total force um <clears throat> but uh i'll push later because i don't have yeah. it so the army is standing at about 81 percent mm -hmm. and they have a deadline of of december 15th yeah and you you look at those numbers as a whole things that are that are going on in the world and you know, how is this going to affect military readiness? How many leadership roles are you losing? Mm -hmm. How much how much experience are you going to lose because right. of this? And not, not to mention all the money that we spent in training these folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to make for putting untested individuals into leadership roles. Yep. And... I personally, just knowing how when somebody's put in a position like that and they don't really know what they're doing, whoever's above them is usually manipulated to do what they want them to do or will assign them certain things right. to ensure that they're, they're on that, that focused point that they're showing to them. Sure. Another interesting thing is um, with all that going on with the uh, service members, there has been a few individuals that have come out, uh, predominantly females, um, and they've filed class action lawsuits. Also, just, you know, they're just seeking to overturn the ruling as far as the mandate. And, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of it pertains to women trying to conceive and or already pregnant that are service members. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what happened to my body, my choice? Yeah. You know, and, and you know, I don't see anybody out in the streets protesting about my body, my choice for these service members that have already sacrificed so much for our country. You know, whether they're male or female, they sacrifice every day. And here we are, here's our government or, you know, whatever you want to call them, our overlords. And they're putting their, basically they're putting their their foot on the necks of these individuals and it's enough's enough they've sacrificed enough we're i mean when are we going to stand up and say hey especially because i mean and we, we read it a couple weeks ago the the soldier's prayer you know yeah and i don't care what anybody says there yeah, the others everybody plays a part in this 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 game we call freedom and liberty right but when it comes down to brass tacks, it's going to be the soldier that's going to end up fighting for that liberty, and that may come in the form of a civilian army. Or and I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, projecting anything. I'm not inciting anything. I'm just, I'm just basically 
speaking about who is responsible for for safeguarding our our liberties and it right. comes down to the soldier right and <clears throat> but who safeguards the soldier well other soldiers and i think this is how they do it i think i think the military is going to end up losing a lot of really good people and i think some of these individuals you know um i seen part of um um, this paragraph that was also in that Stars and Stripes. Yeah. And they were quoting another article from uh, the Washington Post that basically basically broke down the individuals that aren't receiving the vaccine or, you know, never went to college mm. and phrased it oh, in a way that... They're ignorant? They're ignorant. Right. And the first thing I thought of was as somebody who went to public school in the inner city of Milwaukee, who was part of the desegregation of the inner city of Milwaukee in the 80s, mm-hmm. um, I was fortunate that I was a knucklehead and I didn't pay attention to much, much stuff. Now, it really, really wasn't happening there because what I do remember, and I had a lot of black teachers. I grew up, I went to school in an all-black elementary school. Yeah. Uh, very mixed um, uh, junior high and then half of my high school was, uh, was all black where from my freshman and sophomore year before my dad made me move. Right. And uh, the well, I just kind of lost my train of thought on that. But well, we'll kind of come back to just overall. We you know we left off as I know you got that slide to go back. If we could go back to the slide, that way we could kind of get back on track. Sure, I'm Let me sorry. Pull that back up, please and thank you. Huh? I said please and thank you. Yes, yes. Let me take this down. Um, but there we go. There we go. So the we discussed the overall <clears throat> numbers are in decline. Yes. And that you know all these th- all these things that they're essentially going to be losing. But you know you were on to a really good point, and I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, because cause if you can refresh my memory, that'd be great. You were was- you were on to a really good point because you were talking about how they were getting if, if and I'm not quoting you. In my words, it sounds like they're pushing all these individuals out Mm -hmm. by, you know, mandating this vaccine. Yeah. And these, you know, seasoned individuals that have been deployed multiple times that are, you know, that understand Mm -hmm. what comes with being in the military. So I think there's something behind that. And I I know you were going to get ready to touch on that. And yeah, it was essentially, and I just remember what he was going to say. I... I was never indoctrinated as a kid because I wasn't paying attention as a kid, and I'm I'm not, I'm not uh, a very intelligent person. I've been Neither burned uh, quite a few times. I've been manipulated before, mm-hmm. and I know what that feels like. So I think I'm pretty well versed as far as spotting that out. And I feel like you know these people. I'm not saying they're they're dummies too. The the ones because I don't think they are. I think they always say that. People that have experienced trauma early in life make good soldiers yeah. because they're looking for structure. If they come from a dysfunctional environment, they're looking for something other than what they had. And usually that means structure. Right. There's no perfect family. I'm not saying that. There's functional and dysfunctional. And I, th- I think a lot of these people that are getting out say something just doesn't seem right about this. Right. Not to mention the fact that they raised their right hand and swore an oath to this country. Mm-hmm. And that's foreign and domestic. Right. So I think possibly a lot of these people, yeah, they're, they, they don't want to take this vaccine because in the military, you got to take all sorts. I've, took, I've had anthrax. I've had multiple other vaccines. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is different. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, you know, nothing comes out of this as far what, as... What about law enforcement? I know that... Yeah. You... yeah. And, uh, but actually, before we get to law enforcement... We do have uh, a quick, quick video because this 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 pertains directly to the military. Um, I hear so much talk about military readiness with all this stuff going on with our own military and the fact that we just created a terrorist state in Afghanistan. Okay. So, I thought it would be kind of cool to show the folks at home what's going on. Yeah, like where 
all that money. And now, you know, there's been talk too that we're going to give them like we did in 2000 and, uh, 2001. We gave the Taliban uh, a bunch of money. Right. So, hey, stop beheading people. You know, they were going to get rid of opium. So we threw all this money at them. We're getting ready to do the same thing again. But I think it's important for people to kind of see, well, where has that money gone right, you know, as far as right now and the stuff that we've done over in Afghanistan. So I wanted to, wanted to show folks uh, a couple of videos. And, Very interesting. Yes, and here is, uh, here is the first one. The Islamic Marat Alam Sharif, Chipotoy Bakr, Imam Muzayan, the Zanguri, the Navisara, the Lord Lamaka in the Karabi. The Saru Kurbanai, Kramanzu Razamu, Darangina Sauda, Kramanzu Razamu, Darangina Sauda, وقرون نوبت حمل و انتقال آن اسلحه سنگین سلاح های صبح ماینه های مختلف و نو بشکه های زب رنگ و متربمه ها رسیده است که در راه استقلال و دفاع از کشور در برابر اشغالگران خارجی و غلامان آنها مورد استفاده قرار گرفته اند و حالا نیز از آنها استفاده می شود Wow. And would you look at that, people? That, a, you know what? We could thank, thank you, President. Thank you, Joe Biden. Thank you, President Biden, for just making Al Qaeda and ISIS and that and whole tal the Taliban. The Taliban that whole evil pot of shitheads. Come thank on, you, man. Thank hey, you for making their dreams come the true. Truth. Thank you so much. It, it's almost like, um, and it, they were, that was advertisement. That's what that looked like. Recruiting. Recruiting. And the first thing I saw was like, God, these guys look like, like we just formed some specter association that would fight James Bond. Okay, about the video editing, you know, whoever edited that video, I, I, I just want to tell them that they need to do a better job next time. I'm, I'm sure that guy's missing either some hands or some eyes or something because they're like, what is this? I've I mean, seen better stuff from uh, I thought from I, kids on uh, YouTube. I thought I was watching like a D movie commercial or something. I was like pretty bad. You'd think that they would have put like um, maybe some drone, maybe a... Uh, RG33. I think they probably sold a lot of that, or they had to, they had to give that to their overlords, right. you know, because it's always somebody's, somebody's rubbing somebody's back. Somebody's. I, I think I would have just kept with the marching if I were them, and not the kung fu. Well, we haven't even got to that. Oh. We actually, we have, we have another video, and this is exclusive before it actually drops. We got word that they're getting ready to have a major Christmas sale. Yeah. On on their 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 special their special units. I, I'm not going to say special forces because uh, no. I was special forces and these guys are these guys are a little bigger caliber. Right. Okay. Right. These these guys these know, guys what, know what they're doing. Okay. So we Get got our no hands. Head. Yeah, we got our hands on this exclusive video that the Taliban will be dropping uh, pre Christmas. So. Evil overlords all around the world can get their order in. On uh, there's you no know, shortage of that. There's none, you know, for for their no. their most insidious desires. No, no. And these these guys that they got, top of the line, <laughs> top shelf, baby. Right okay, there. so let's show the folks at home just what it is that we're we're talking about here. Let's let's see this video from the Taliban. <laughs> Cobra, 
Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. Wowie wow. Wow. That wow. was... Folks, get your checkbooks. Don't worry about Christmas presents, Ooh. food. Look at that. Ah, uh, toilet paper. I mean... Get your order in I felt, for those guys. I felt like I was watching like a Chuck, uh, Chuck Norris, like... They were trying so hard to like. Uh, Kumite. That's all I can say. I can say Kumite and the speed and lethalness with which these these fighters moved. But why were they I using. I couldn't even see half of their movements because of just how fast they were moving. But why were they using like clay? Look like. I don't know. Are you. Are you? Have you ever broken a clay pot with your hand or jumped in the air 16 feet and came down with your fist? No, sir. No, I didn't think so. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, don't downplay Listen. The, the sophistication of the CIA trained. T- I mean, the yeah, we'll edit that out at some point. But wow. um, yeah, we don't. We shouldn't be saying stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> there's your U.S. tax dollars. Hard at work, folks. Yes. Hard at work. And if you notice, the uh, uniforms and the footwear brought to you by <laughs> the U.S. government. Yeah, I did, but I, I, I thought I saw I thought somebody wearing some ASICs. Meh, maybe not. Maybe I was, uh, maybe I was uh, fooled a little bit. I'm going to uh, touch on um, a couple things. I'm going to bring that slide back up real quick and just just touch on a couple things. We've already talked about this last week sure. and how this is this is all you know, this is all by design. So this, what what's the end what's the end game? What's the end game? The end game is a world. Well, the fir- first part is I believe nationalized police force. From there, it will morph into a world police force. George Bush Sr. called for it years ago. Yeah. When he was talking about his new world order. Oddly enough, he delivered a speech. It was one of the first times he used the words new world order. This was right around the same time of Agenda 21 going on in Rio de Janeiro. He gave a speech speaking about the new world order on September 11th, 1990. (laughs) Yes. Interesting dates. Yes. You look here... And I got a couple articles from one about the the formation of, and you've heard it here before when we were talking about Australia, the Strong Cities Network, mm. and how they are going to develop uh, tactics. I think actually what um, what was said is this is on this was on September 30th. That first article is from 2015. Loretta Lynch told Loretta Lynch told the United Nations that the Attorney General's office. Working with several U.S. cities will begin work on global law enforcement initiatives. She referred to this initiative as the Strong Cities Network. That is just one small branch on this giant tree that we are all kind of sitting under and having rock fruit hit us in the head. There's also, um, and we didn't really touch on it very much, but every major metro area in the United States has seen a spike in crime and a downward spiral when it comes to actual well, that was all cops on the street. A part of the design with, if you go back to uh, right around the beginning times of COVID, <coughs> you had masses, not the beginning, excuse me, fast forward, uh, fast forward to around Biden. You were seeing masses of people being that were incarcerated being released Mm -hmm. and it makes total sense because they needed that and anarchy they needed that type of a a purge like you know absolute environment and and one of the things and i think we need to touch on that in a upcoming show the depth with which one individual in particular george soros has donated millions upon millions of dollars to district attorney campaigns throughout the United States. And during the summer of love of 2020, when DAs were releasing criminals because of COVID, because uh, pe- people in jail need to isolate at home. 
Right. Um, they uh, they didn't want the people in jail because the people in jail are very important. Well, people the people in jail because, could get sick. Well, listen, listen. The people in jail, they get free meals. They get a free gym pass. They get a free nice bed. Okay. They get their PlayStation, their Xbox, their Wi-Fi. Right. So they're they're VIPs essentially. Conjugal visits. So that's why they were released early. Okay. Yes. Oh, enough said. Except for one last thing on this slide. Yes. Socialism is like a mouse trap. It works because the mouse doesn't understand why the cheese is free. And that is such a beautiful analogy right there. Yes, because this this all works in unison with that analogy right there. You may not see it because you're like, well, this is law enforcement. You know? Um, I will you, say, go ahead. I'm sorry, love. Well, I was just going to say, you look at all the other things that are involved, and that piece of cheese is going to be them offering a way out of this situation. Mm-hmm. A way to turn the magic light switch on the wall back on. Right. Or or put yum-yums in my tum-tum. Well, Stuff like that. I will say for as far as law enforcement goes with the mandates, and each department's different, each state's different, and but the unions are fighting, and they're fighting for their folks, so good on them for actually standing up yeah in one way i'm like yeah good good on the unions when most of the time i'd be like right poo poo on the unions right but, but i see what you're saying I, I i agree the the law enforcement unions you know they're definitely putting up the fight yeah yeah i i, I totally agree and um you know we'll, we'll see what uh we'll see what old joey jojo Candy biden joe. says you know is this gonna be the the winner it's already getting cool down here Listen. And I, I don't like that. It's I like wearing shorts all year, folks. That's what being a flow rider is all about. Right, right. And uh, just a quick uh, update on Afghanistan really fast. Just a yeah. two-second one. The Afghanistan right now is in a horrible, it's, uh, <clears throat> it, you know, there's a huge humanitarian crisis going on, aside from the Taliban beheading people and soccer team members from a girls soccer team but anyways people don't care about that because what's hot right now is uh what's mainstream you know well uh dave Chappelle like, making a, a comedian making a joke right that's more important yeah you know what i mean yeah. and that's where humanity has gone we as human beings and this has nothing to do with where you're from or whatnot because ultimately we need to all come together. This is going to be a global thing. And uh, unfortunately, Afghanistan's not in a good state. So please, people, if you can, say a prayer for the people of Afghanistan. If you can contribute in any type of way, please do. Except for money. Don't don't send direct money because you might not know where that's, that's going. There are no, organizations there, on the ground that there, are helping. There are organizations on the ground. And next episode, I'll <clears> definitely <throat> get a list together that we can kind of put out there. But you're absolutely right. Before you send the money, make sure you know what the source is and that those actual people are getting the help they need. Aside from that, um, I'll let Glider take the, the reins again. The, um, you will smooch, you mentioned something about, read a story uh, yesterday about, um, and they, they didn't say the girl's age, but she was part of a, a volleyball team. And um, I think it was Kabul. And... Um, she was beheaded simply because she was she was a female athlete. Now, let's not get confused with the fact that the you know a lot of people are going to come in and be like, well, especially with that certain um, person that was killed. Um, the Taliban had been trying to take over Afghanistan before the fall of Kabul. You know, the fall of Kabul was basically the it was the last straw that needed a drop but the dates indicate that she was killed around the time that the taliban came into kabul so just to clarify yeah yeah it was um it's unfortunate august um yeah either way i mean that's just one example that's just one of, of the many of the evil acts the human rights violations that I, I don't care what anybody says. When you look at what we allowed to happen, but blood. and nobody's been held responsible yet, we, 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 the only thing we ever call for is accountability. Yes. And it never, 
it never manifests. Well, aside from that, I think you've meant you've mentioned this multiple times and you know, it's a thought in my mind as well as where are all these feminists? Where are you? Dear feminist, there's so much going on in the world. You have transgender men saying that they're able to conceive and carry children. They are trying to take our identities. Women, where are you? Women are um, obsolete, I believe. If I can have a baby now, I mean, you know, as a man. Mm-hmm. Although the only thing is, is like, because I'm not well versed if i ever did and i'm not saying i I love you i'd never leave you smooch but in a hypothetical situation if i left and i wanted to have a baby and is it going to be delivered through my junk no i would assume through your my my butt your 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 anus (laughs) (laughs) that's not funny all right That's not one damn bit funny because either way it's going to really hurt me. So I I don't. I think I I think think I'm going to get my tubes tied. Think about it. My tubes tied. If you're going to have a baby, think about it like comparison to China having ballistic rockets that are, uh, you know, to the point where supersonic and you know American (laughs) officials are coming out and openly saying that we would not be able to handle. The capacity. First of all, I am so sick of, so sick and tired of being played second fiddle. We are America. What Alien. happened to America? People don't like America because. Well, screw well, those we're people. We're America. Screw you know? those people. That's what I say too. We should. Well, no, not literally screw them. Not literally, but you know what I mean. But screw off. Yeah. Essentially. Be gone with your evil selves. <sighs> It may come, <clears throat> there may come a point in time, especially now when you're hearing so much more about divorce, mm-hmm. like national divorce, which is a nice way of saying civil war. But we're not, we're not praying for that. No. We're, we're praying for guidance, strength. Unity. And, and God's light to guide us. Yes. Whether you're Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist. Doesn't matter. The, we, really doesn't. No. We, we have to love one another. We have to be tolerant. Mm-hmm. You know? Amen. Amen. So let's. Uh, so now we're gonna um, we're gonna touch on what we what we did last week, just because there was a really good, uh, um, I guess, cross examination you could say during the congressional hearings with Merrick Garland, and I think uh, Representative Chip Wright. I don't know him very well, but I, I liked what he brought up, and I think. Uh, I think it's something that folks should uh, should hear if you haven't heard it. It's it's about five minutes long, but we'll go ahead and bring this slide up real quick just so uh, everybody can see it. And um, actually, let me uh, let me do this. Let me bring it back up. And whammo. Okay. So <clears throat> as you can see, yesterday, well, actually, no. What's the 23rd today? I forgot. We're, it's late in the evening. It is the nightcap. Uh, Thursday, White House was counseled or consulted by National School Board Association, Association letter comparing parents to domestic terrorists before it was released. The story came out from Red State um, on Thursday. There's been a lot of other places that have come out with, with the same story, essentially. Right. And... <clears throat> Uh, something else that also came out was uh, school board's uh, super uh, intended, I guess, is email shows Loudoun County, Virginia board knew about the rape. Right. Even though the board members, members, and you'll see this in this this Chip Roy uh, clip, yeah. where he, he kind of calls them out on it. And I think... Which is so refreshing. Yes. And and just just so folks, just so you, rem- you remember, and if you, you didn't see last week's show or you're not familiar with this case... The individual that is really kind of uh, in question here is Merrick Garland, and the indiv- the the superintendent, the superintendent, but this Xander Tanner. Now that's Merrick Garland's uh, son-in-law. Okay, he's the guy who married uh, his daughter. Right. He is the guy who also helped create Panorama Education. 
Mm-hmm. Now, and I we, we kind of touched on this last week. The one thing I didn't put in there that I should have is that these these contracts that the, the uh, this panorama is engaged in, you know, it's it's millions and millions of dollars. Right. And they're pushing things like critical race theory. That is, I'm sorry, love. You know, coming from that background of being a contractor. Yeah. I just, it, I can't wrap my head around how there's contracting for, I mean, maybe I'm <clears throat> ignorant, but. No. no, no, you're right. But you have to think. The contracting you did was saving American lives. Right. Because you had a skill set that people needed and it and it benefited US service members on the ground. The contracting that these people are doing is manipulation, indoctrination, and stealing from the American tax paper or payer. And then I I, I won't even say it, but we've seen it before in other elite families how they share the wealth they go through a proxy yep in order to enrich their own pockets and i i, I don't guy. think yeah the big guy a little bit for the big, big guy isn't that right joe come on man absolutely joe so we have this video that we want to show and it is from the congressional hearings on the 21st and it um it's very good guys yes it's about like i said it's about five minutes long but uh We'll play it and um, probably be getting close to closing time for us. So without further ado, this is uh, Chip Roy, Representative Chip Roy, uh, interrogating Merrick Garlican. No, it's Garland. Garland. I'm sorry. It's Garland. Oh, sorry. Chairman, Attorney General Garland, do you know where Broad Run High School is? Do you know where Broad Run High School is? It's in Ashburn, Virginia, in Loudoun County, Virginia. Do you know why I care? Because I'm a graduate of Loudoun Valley High School. Despite my family having Texas roots back to the 1850s, I grew up in Loudoun. It was my home. And also I care because on October 6th, a mere 15 days ago, inside Broad Run High School in Loudoun County, Virginia, a young girl was sexually assaulted. Attorney General Garland, are you aware that because Loudoun County prosecutors confirmed that the boy who assaulted this young girl in Broad Run High School is the same boy who wore a skirt and went into a girl's bathroom, sodomized and raped a 14-year-old girl in a different Loudoun County High School on May 28th. Are you aware of those facts? The, the boy was, are you aware firmly, are you, Sorry, are you aware point. further that the boy was arrested and charged for the first assault in July, but released from juvenile detention? It sounds like a state case and I'm not familiar with it, I'm sorry. Do you agree with Loudon parents who said it is not okay to allow a child that has been charged with a rape to go back into a school in that public school system? Again, I don't know any of the facts of this case, but, uh, but uh, the way you put it, it certainly sounds like I would agree with you. Is but FBI, I don't know the facts of the case. Is the FBI or the Department of Justice investigating the Loudon School Board for violating civil rights or under authority of, say, the Violence Against Women Act? Uh, I don't believe so, but I don't know the answer to that. I'd ask why not, because on June 22nd at a school board meeting in Loudoun County, Virginia, the superintendent, Scott Ziegler, declared in front of the father of the girl who had been raped that the predator, transgender student, or person simply does not exist. And that to his knowledge, we don't have any records of assaults occurring in our restrooms. When this statement bothered the father of the girl, I'm a father of a daughter, I believe you are too, sir, the girl who had been raped, sodomized in the bathroom of a high school by a dude wearing a skirt, that father reacted. Now that father reacted by simply using a derogatory word. Would that statement have bothered you if your daughter had been raped, if somebody said that it didn't occur? Again, I I don't know anything about the facts of this case, but derogatory words are not what my memorandum is about. Well, the victim's mother is heard on a cell phone video telling the crowd what happened. My child was raped at school, she said. Behind her, the victim's father is seen being arrested bloodied this man this arrest of a 48 year old plumber became the poster boy for the new domestic terrorism the biden administration the administration in which you serve has concocted to destroy anyone who gets in the way as the ranking member said the national school boards association wrote a letter to the president citing smith's case we all know this to be true attorney general do you believe that a father attending a meeting exercising his first amendment rights and yes getting angry about whatever lies are being told about his daughter being raped in the school he sent her to be educated in, that this is domestic terrorism, yes or no? No, I do not think that 
parents getting angry at school boards for whatever reason constitute domestic terrorism? It's not even a close question. To be clear, even if there's a threat of violence, do you believe that it is domestic terrorism that the FBI has the power to target American citizens in local disputes because a father gets mad? Now, I'm not saying Mr. Smith did that. In fact, he didn't. I can tell you how I sure as hell would have reacted. Mr. Smith should be given a medal for his calm to be able to hold back his anger. Are you aware that Loudoun County failed to report this sexual assault according to state law? And are you investigating this? Again, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about this case. Are you aware that the Virginia General Assembly, run by Democrats, voted for and Democrat Governor Ralph Northam signed a bill allowing schools to refrain from reporting instances of sexual battery, stalking, violation of a protective order, and violent threats occurring on school property? Is the FBI investigating how this may conflict with the Violence Against Women Act or conflict with your own domestic terrorism uh, efforts? I don't know anything about the Virginia legislation. Do you agree with the following statement, as a father or as a cabinet member? Quote, you don't want parents coming into every different school jurisdiction saying that this is what we sh which should be taught here and that this is what should be taught here. Look, the Justice Department has no role with respect to what curriculum is taught in the schools. This is a matter uh, for um, local decision making and not would, for the Justice Department, and we are not in any way suggesting that we have any. I would note that that statement was by a Democratic uh, gubernatorial candidate in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I would note that there are a number of other issues of concerns to the Virginia Department of Education, what's being taught there, and the, fat, the lack and the total failure of Loudoun County of reporting all of these incidents that have occurred in Lou Loudoun County Public Schools. I've got eight seconds left. Attorney General Garland, I sent a letter along with my colleague Thomas Massey regarding the incidents of January 6th on May 13th and on July 15th and have not gotten a response from the Department lady, of Justice. Can you commit to... I'll tell you what. That Merrick Garland, two things. Yeah. Get some sun, right. vitamin D. Yep. You don't want to get the COVID. And uh, you're a piece of crap. Absolutely. I mean... Who does this guy deny? Like, if you're listening to it and they're asking him and he's like, I had no knowledge. I, I had no knowledge. I have no knowledge. It's so Sandwiches easy. Sandwiches where? I, it's so easy to sit there and, oh, I don't know. Sugar I don't cubes? Know. He looks like a rat. He does. Like, he looks like Fauci's. Yeah, uh, a sugar cube. He, he came out of thing. Fauci's ass or something. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me, what he said early on when the guy. Um, the guy Chip Roy was kind of describing the case, right? And he goes, um, "I'm not familiar with that case. Seems like a local matter." Yeah, yeah, it is. Just like parents questioning a school board right. in their community—that's their right about their children. That seems like a local matter. So why, why after five days of that letter mm -hmm. going to? Um, the minions that they they are associated with in the Department of Justice. Five days. They got a the response. Case. Well, here's my question: Is if they feel threatened by parents going to school board meetings, then what are these school board meetings about? Then you know what are they for? They were they're there for this exact reason: for parents to come out and voice their concerns yeah. and or their appreciation. And a lot of that lately, I haven't seen zip appreciation because you know what they're right now good is bad and bad is good yep up is down S left is right simple in as is out uh arby's is good culver's is not yep that's a lie that is a damn lie yep. culver's makes a damn good burger they do they do and the other thing is is that these are how is it and i, I guess essentially he just swore at the school board and up, oh, arrest him. Up oh, was his head. Obstruction oh, of head. They are conducting themselves like they're royalty. Mm -hmm. From a position where they were elected. On our tax dollars. Yes. Well, and some of these school boards, I, I, I know they, um, some of them aren't paid, some of the positions, but it doesn't matter because. I don't care. These they, people are getting. They wanted it. Well, not only that. If you don't think that these people aren't in these positions and somebody else is like, hey, yep. there's more where that came from. You just keep playing ball with us and we'll take care of you. You got the seat at the table. That's right. And that's all these people think. They all think they're going to get it. But what they don't realize is, is you're just a foot soldier. Yeah, there's for the not real, room for you um, at the table. 
yeah, the real demons up on top, the uh, the um, Luciferians or whatever you want to call those enlightened um, uh, elite uh, garbage, uh. garbage and uh, traitor maybe um, evil. Uh, there's there's a multitude of things I can think of. Uh, How for is those it folks. that my mother, that was never had an education, born and raised in Afghanistan. How is it that she's able to comprehend, you know, treason? Uh, a lot of what's gone on in our country, we need to call it what it is. There has been a lot of treasonous acts by higher government officials. It's a coup. And I'm sorry, I feel like, and I may be deemed whatever. Treasonous? Because you're a patriot? But and you- at the end of the day... What are, we, what are we supposed to do? Just play with our thumbs and... No. No. We're supposed to, we're supposed to stand with each other. And the more and p- more people educate themselves and look at what's really going on, especially if you've got kids, take an interest in what they're looking at. Yeah. Because I've said it before. I'm not going to shy away from it. Knowing what I've known, what, knowing what I know, I'm not a smart person. I'm not, I'm not some brilliant rocket scientist or anything like that. But I've been manipulated by several people before in the past, as a small child, as a young man, as an adult. And I think a lot of people that have to go through that, go through other hardships. Um, we all do. You you learn to recognize those things. Right. And this, the level of manipulation in every aspect of our life is equivalent to the air we breathe. Mm -hmm. It's that deep. It's literally, you walk around breathing air, you don't even really think about it. You just, you know, (sighs) well, if you're a mouth breather and you're overweight, you might sound like that. I kind of sound like this. But you don't even think about it. Right. And people, (sighs) folks, we're not lying to you. No. They are in every orifice that's open. And their and real taking, desire is our children's orifices. They're taking every inch of power away from us. They're stripping us. I mean, bit by bit. I mean, the next thing you know, the last episode we touched on the red flag law. And I hope you folks at home have really looked into that for yourselves. Look into this. This is something, this isn't a distraction because a lot of what's going on in the world right now is a distraction. But this right here with the school board, this isn't a distraction. This is something that needs accountability. We need people to take responsibility and resign because there is no way in hell that any parent, I don't care who it is, if I was there and my child, God forbid, was in that same position, I would have went ape shit. Yeah. At that school board, you would have seen me throwing chairs. It would have been bad. Absolutely. Because my child's, you know, something so sacred, and my child is sacred to me. And 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 for that, <clears throat> for that school board, and a member of the school board, a very, um, I guess, leftist member of the school board, yeah, did resign. Beth, uh, Beth, Bartz. Yeah, Beth Bartz. Bartz or farts, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. She she kind of hey, let's just put this under the rug, so. We want people to be trans to feel comfortable. Listen, I don't have anything. Personally, you want to do whatever you want with your... At the end of the day, you're going to go to the grave by yourself. You're going to meet God by yourself. Mm -hmm. No one else is going to be there. No gay community is going to be there standing there with a whole rainbow flag or no a trans uh, politician community. right saying i'm fighting for it's you it's just gonna be you oh you're dying oh get away from me Don't and god so people do the right thing get out there speak up before it's too late before you can't and we're sitting there going why well i don't i don't i don't ever want to be in that that position god no so we do what we can. Yes. We we look for like-minded individuals. Yes. To create within your own community 
essentially your your team or your the foundation yes your foundation for where you live right and you know we've said it before and we have a we have a multicultural multi-religious um authentic un type of family <laughs> not uh well we play cards so we are taking money from from people here and there but uh <laughs> Our but, friends usually take our money, though. Yeah, the, well, we didn't say fr- we said family. Damn it! So that's right. But um, we're we're gonna we're gonna come out with some game plans here in the near future. I wish we had a little more time, but our reinforcements have been showing up. So yes, we're gonna be able to do uh, some more stuff, and uh, we want we really want to get out. Want to go to places like Tallahassee and talk to some folks, and uh, hopefully not get smoked in the face. Yeah. Although it wouldn't be the first time, so so but, it. Oh, go ahead. One then. more thing. Uh, some of our, you know, we have our Florida folks, and then we have our California folks, because I know I have some family friends watching there. You guys, uh, please, please <clears throat> brush up. Refreshing. Brush up, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll put out these videos, and we'll see what happens next. But stay Amen. tuned, and uh, if you guys have anything, any input. Please let us know in the comments. Yes, please. Questions, concerns, comments. What um, What do you want us to look into? You know, yep. we're 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 all ears. We're ready to commit and uh, take it to the next level. That's right. So, with that being said, we're going to leave you with the same image that we did last week. I think it's appropriate because the more and more I look at this image, the more and more I don't want to be there anymore. No, and. We pray that uh, that we can pull other folks out of this cave. Let's get out. Because if we continue to stay in that cave, eventually they're just going to close it up where that guy is way up at the top there. So with that being said, we want to thank everybody for, for, for tuning in and uh, checking us out again. And, yep. And uh, may, God, may God guide us with his light, his strength, and um, his love. And his love. So with that being said, thank you, everybody, and long live live liberty. liberty. Good night, everybody. Good night.